We were discussing something a little bit earlier is why everybody, you know, that has the same kind of horn sounds different. And basically that's my sound. That's what I sort of like to do. That's the way I sound. But if I want to, uh, let's see. a whole nother sound, whole different approach. And then if I play with an orchestra, I tend to use a nice fat sound, but I thin it down just a little bit and concentrate on my pitch with the first violinist. And it's a different sound, but it's similar to my full bodied sound, which is what I like to get. Sound is produced up here, produced with the ears. So as I practiced, I would take things from the stuff that I was listening to and I would try and play them and with my eyes closed my my mo whole mo whole thing my whole life has always been with my eyes closed I don't know what that is but that's where I find my space and it's like I hear the best without seeing and uh, all I did was emulate what I heard and now remember it, uh, you're listening to a recording that's not what the person actually sounds like. If you'll hear him in person, he sounds different than that. But it's close. So all I did was keep shedding and keep shedding, and then one day, I know I was playing this uh, Hubert Law's tune, uh, it's still one that I like to warm up with, because it starts on a low C on your horn, and it's, it's a, for most people, it's a hard one to play on the flute. And you know, one day I started to play it, and there it was. I heard the sound, I was emulating the sound, the strength of my sound was good, the timbre of my tone was right, and my approach to the articulation of the notes and everything was exactly what I was hearing with Hubert. So I heard it, I stopped for a second, and then I started playing over and over and over again until I locked it into my brain that I knew what I had accomplished here in order to get that sound. You, the instrument doesn't play you, you play the instrument. You can make the instrument sound like what you want. And that's through practice and through everything else and through a good attentive practice. When I play, when I practice, I play long tones a lot. You just sit there in a room and you. When you do that, you establish in yourself pitch relation to your horn, relative pitch to your horn, and what it's required in your embouchure to get a good sound on your instrument. So long tones for any horn player on any horn is exactly the way that you can approach getting better at what you do. Holding a note a long time until you're spitting air out, till you have none left. The reason for that is because that brings into play your diaphragm. Now there are many contrasting views and whether really the diaphragm has anything to do with anything. I believe it does. I believe the muscles in your stomach, two things happen. When you're down to no more air at all, and you can't possibly, you think you can't possibly hold that note anymore, you're squeezing every drop of air out of your lungs. In order to do that, you need to push from your stomach. That's where the air is in the bottom of your lungs, the good air. So what happens is 90% of the people walking around today only breathe with about half of their lung capacity, not even close to it. If you're a long distance runner, you use it all. You learn to use it all so that you can sustain yourself and not hyperventilate and all that kind of stuff. Well, as a horn player, you have to learn to 
get that same approach to your sound. So it means you have to breathe deeply. So by doing long tones, you take a full deep breath. For you, that might only be half of your lungs. When you take that breath and you start to blow out and you control it and you blow out slowly and you're doing it, you're doing it. Now you're starting to get down to the end. You're out of air. You can't stop. You have to keep blowing. You have to keep going until you're almost spitting. You just can't even get another thing out and you'll notice you're pushing with your stomach. Now the next time you take a deep breath, you'll take a, a little more air than you did before. You'll go further down into your lungs. Eventually, you do this every day, all the time, forever. You're learning your horn better that way than anything you could possibly do with tons of mechanical exercises. You're learning your horn from the inside out because you know its tone, its beauty, its quality, its deficiencies, everything. You know everything about your horn from long tones. So any horn player that's here, whether it be trumpet, trombone, Saxophone, clarinet, flute, I don't care what it is. Long tones will get you to this point where you start to understand your instrument better, where you get more air and more ability to support sound and give you a much better tone than you ever possibly will get without doing them. Jazz is not all about me, all about just the soloist. That concept is extremely egotistical and extremely um, foolish. Jazz is a conversation like I'm having with you now. And if anyone here decided to ask me a question, I listen to him and I react to his question. Okay. In, if I put a quart, my quartet up here, when I start to play, or we start to play as an assumption, from the instant that all of us are involved, from that instant, I'm not only talking, but I'm listening. And all of a sudden, the drummer says something to me in something he does, which affects what I'm going to play. Or he hears something that I'm playing that affects what he's going to play. This is a conversation, and it's constant throughout the whole song, even if you're not playing. One of the biggest things that I have that I don't like is when you watch a quartet playing, and now the saxophone player finishes playing, or the trumpet player, or whatever, and they'll talk to somebody, or they'll do something. They've, they've just broken the circle. We have a circle of this group. We, I should be as interested in hearing what they're doing when I'm not playing as I am when I'm playing. Because I'm going to have to come back in. And the assumption of me coming back in is based on what they did. If I was in this room playing, and you were all sitting right up to here and everything else, I wouldn't see any of you. Not when I was playing. I'd see you when I wasn't, but I wouldn't see you really, but I'd feel you. I know you're there. And I know I can feel whether you're into what I'm doing or not, too, which is scary. That's kind of a cool thing. We've all been on a stage. Has everybody here been on a stage at some point in their lives and sang or played or done something? Pretty much. Everybody? Okay. You know how when you're up there and you're singing and you're doing what you're doing and you're looking at the crowd and you're all nervous and all that kind of stuff, but you could sort of, you look out at the faces and you look at it and you could feel those people listening to you? Well, when you're a jazz player, I don't have to see it, no. I really don't need to see that you're there. I know already what you're doing because I can feel you getting into what I'm playing. I can tell by the kind of silence that I hear or I can tell by what I hear, whether you're into what I'm doing or not. 
And if you're into it, I get energy from that. And then I give it back to you. And what happens when I'm done is a lot of applause.